<laughs> all right, all right, okay. guys. All right, so 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 what do we say to to some like this? What do we yeah. say? Yeah, Is the scripture you're talking about the one you read earlier, like in the beginning? Ah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Pardon. Yeah, because I, 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 when I read that, I'm like, there's no, there's nothing different. You said, how do they navigate submission biblically? Um, because now you're a new Christ, a creature in Christ, so you navigate it the same way you would now that you're reading it in a new, in a new light of Christ that you have inside of you. So the Bible talks about you submitting to your husband, even though he's not, um following Christ, but through your submission, through you following what has been laid out for you to do according to the will of God, and you're doing that, um, you might now win him over. You don't always, you don't necessarily go to win him over by preaching to him, telling him all the time, but your own character and how you're living your life and what you're doing and you being submissive to him, even though he's not following Christ, that can now make him um, follow your God. So that's something I feel like it's the it's the same way you would navigate submission as well. All right, Sister Grace, do you have do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> In addition to that, I think the main thing too is praying for him. And if you're saying that you're a Christian, well, if you're watching biblical gymnastics, I would assume that there's mm -hmm. there's a standard because a lot of people say that they're Christians, but they live their life the same way that they did when they weren't Christians. So if that you have to really see like, okay, am I Am I this, like, what type of Christian are you? Are you a Christian that's truly following the word of God? Because if your husband, he'll be able to see that there is a clear difference from who you were before to who you are now. And it shouldn't be a thing which, oh, yeah, you said you're a Christian, but you still kind of, it seems, what, what changed about you? Because some there's some Christians that are married to unbelievers and the unbeliever mocks them because they don't see a, a clear difference in their person. So if you're a Christian, you're married to an unbeliever, let it be evident that you're a Christian. It's not by being, what's the word, Bridge Well? Pseudo spiritual? Yep. Pseudo. Yeah, it's not by being pseudo spiritual, but by demonstrating your submission and the way you respond to him when he maybe says things that should trigger you or that would trigger you before. Those things should no longer trigger you. You actively pray for him. And in doing those things, eventually, maybe. Get him to, you know, interact. I think Brother Chosen said this last week. Get him to now interact with people that are godly. Because if he's seen, if he's seen how your life has changed, because I've I've seen testimonies and stuff of people who one spouse gives their life to Christ. And this is not like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but I still do everything I want to do. But it's like true submission that is evident. The other spouse comes and joins because he's like, uh-uh, I know how my wife or I know how my husband was before. And what God has done in their life, I want that work in my life too. So by mm. demonstrating what it really means to be a Christian and as a woman submitting, truly loving your husband, treating him the way, treating him as though he's behaving the way that he should. So treating him as though he's a godly man, even when he's not, because that's, that he'll see that. No, nope, he's not like he'll, you can feel when there's a difference. It's evident. Like there's no way that you can ignore it. So that thing will keep pricking his heart and you're praying for him too. It, his heart, it'll touch his heart. Even if he might not say it to you, something is happening. There, there is no way that he'll stay the same. And even if he does, if somehow he, he still has a hard heart, his a stony heart, just know that God is pleased with you. And at the end of the day, that is truly all that matters. That God looks at your life and he looks at you and he said, well, this is my daughter and who I am well pleased. Awesome. So, so, uh, and I think you guys have, you know, it's so funny how you answer the question biblically without even opening the scriptures, you know, so, so let's see what the Bible says, um, you know, based off of what we're looking at. So here's what we looked at before. We looked at this book, uh, first Peter. That's it. First Peter three, one to two. It says, likewise, wives be subject to your own husbands so that even if some do not obey the word, I want you to notice this, this person is not obeying the word. It says, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. He's saying your life becomes the gospel that the husband sees. You see that? It says, your life becomes the gospel that he sees. Why? Because it's like, what is this? She wasn't like this before, you know, but how do we know that this is not just Peter talking? Because this is Peter. Well, let's see what uh, uh, Paul t tells the Corinthians. All right, so, so Paul says a similar thing to the Corinthians in his own Paul way. 
So First Corinthians 7, 13 to 16. It says, if any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever, so he's not even saved, which means if his husband, because based on if the husband was an unbeliever, which means maybe she was an unbeliever and then she got saved. So this is the perfect mm -hmm. example. It says, and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Doesn't mean that the person's saved. There's a whole thing about that. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. Then look at verse 15. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. We've looked at it when we talked about divorce. God has called you to peace. Now, look at verse 16. For how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? But how does this happen? Peter tells us, in your conduct, in what you do, that your life becomes the light that they see. They're like, whoa, what is this? So we see that the scripture already answers this question. It already answers the question of, of you know, your husband isn't following the word. What do you do? Submit. Submit. Why? Because that shows that, first of all, you're not just sub you're submitting to God, but that also shows him like this is what Christ does. Christ changes our nature. And all of a sudden he's like, and, and I think the good example of this is a Lee, Lee Strobel, right? Lee Strobel, if, if, you, if you don't know, go check it out. He has a, you know, I think the case for Christ. He has a thing called the case for Christ. And he talks about how he was an atheist. His wife was an atheist. Then, you know, while he was, because uh, uh, he was trying to disprove Christianity. So he was studying to try to disprove Christianity. Then along the way, his wife got saved. And he hated God. So he, he, his wife go for Bible study, he, would, he, 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 he did everything to frustrate her. But he noticed that what she was giving back was different. This lady was more caring, more loving, and he, he just couldn't understand it. Like, literally, like he, and he talks in the video, like, it confused him. He didn't understand what was going on. And that was how God touched his life. And he became saved. Through the love that his wife showed when he was being evil to her. Simply because of, and he was being this way because of what she was doing, which was she was serving God, and he hated God. But his wife showed, didn't just go, oh, you know, I, I'm, no, no. His wife showed him love, even when he wasn't nice to her. And I think that that is such an interesting thing, how God tells us that we should not repay evil with evil. Isn't that funny? How Jesus says these things, but then we don't think about it when it comes to a husband and wife. We think about it when it comes to strangers, you know?